What is going on guys, my name is Mad Dog Games, and today we got a central tiz from our special guest, The Competitor. Hello, I'm The Competitor. I've been playing NetherRealm games competitively for multiple years, and I am known as a Johnny Cage Specialist. Today I will share my essential tips and teach you how to play Johnny in Mortal Kombat 11. You can follow me on Twitter and Twitch at The Competitor. You can check the description for links to those and my YouTube as well. Before we start, I do have other playlists on the channel that you might be interested in, all found in the description down below. And the way this is going to work, because Johnny Cage is my main as well, I would like to share at least 5 essential tips from my experience, and then have the competitor do the rest. With that, let us begin. Alright, let us start off with Fix It in Post. 1, 2, 4. One of Johnny's effective and essential tools in his arsenal. This attack string is great for pressure and lets you reset in neutral, which is the spot you want to be in as Johnny Cage. Before his recent nerf, you were able to go in and continue your pressure with a forward 3, forward 3, 4, 4, or with a forward 4, 4. You could try to do that now, but it's more risky, because before the patch, you were able to get away with it because it was plus 6 on block. To me, this was a game changer, and I used it all the time. Not as strong as before, but at least this resets you in neutral. Another great thing about this attack is that this is easy to hit confirm into. You stand in 1-2 to allow you to hit confirm into your nut punch and extend it for more damage. This works in close range to pressure as it's fast and leads to a mid. Difficult to punish and react to since it's zero on block. However, the first hit is a high and can be punished if they anticipate it coming. Johnny Cage's pokes are one of the strongest parts about him in my opinion. His low boots, down 3, and Breaking Bad, down 4, are good reaching attacks that also lowers Johnny hitbox at a perfect level. It's plus 17 on hit and low profiles a lot of things that your opponent will try to use, making it one of Johnny's essential tools that should be used most often. Double poke is a good strategy for you to use since it will be hard for your opponent to challenge it. Use down 1 poke to pressure first and space it out for a down 4. This often will punish your opponent's pokes, unless they have a faster poke than Johnny Cage's 7 frame poke. As someone who uses Shock Jock since day 1, this is my favorite variation because of a couple of reasons. First, compared to the other variations, this gives you more tools for up close and uses a gimmicky tool for his overall strategy. Can feel very rewarding when used correctly. For example, you get access to Cage Rage, down back 4, which leaves you relatively safe at negative 3 on block. You can use Director's Cut 4344 for constant pressure. Most people don't know that the first hit is a high, so you can often get away with it at the beginning. However, with the long startup it has, some players will catch on and will try to poke you out of it. The good thing is that your next attempt is a mid. But in situations where you want to use Cage Rage safely, I highly recommend doing Arcing Knee forward 4 into Cage Rage or stand in 1-2 with Cage Rage. Your opponent will be on a block stun so they can't punish it as easy and if they decide to press any buttons, you can punish them instead and then you can amplify it for more damage. But honestly, the best thing about Cage Rage is that your third hit turns into an unblockable attack. Adding that with some chip damage and amplified version, you can deal a lot of good damage. I can't tell you how many times I was able to land this attack since many don't ever see this variation online. Plan your hits accordingly and save your unblockable attack when you and your opponent have a last bit of health left. Using Brass Knuckles down down 2 in the Shock Jock variation is a special move that buffs his chip damage potential against a blocked opponent. At first, it seems like this attack is not that special, but it's more dangerous than you think. Most people don't know that this actually buffs all attacks on blocked opponents, including your projectiles. Throwing projectiles on block will receive a lot of chip damage. Let's compare projectiles on block without brass knuckles and then one with brass knuckles. You'll see it makes a huge difference. In high intense matches, I often activate this buff in the middle of my combo or use it after you complete a combo, like after Shadow Kick for example. Be careful in just throwing it out there because it can get you punished. But I recommend often using this in the middle of your combo and not use it after Shadow Kick because Shadow Kick will just push them away 
and your goal is to get close when using this variation. It honestly depends on the character matchup that you're going against. Mime Time, down back 1, is a special move that can be found in the Shock Jock variation, which allows you to parry an opponent's attack. Amplifying it will allow you to extend it for a combo opportunity, and then also has a crushing blow if you complete the requirement. However, it won't parry any low attacks, jumping attacks, or projectiles. This parry is great against players who love to poke with a lot of down 1 during the match, or who often wakes up each chance they get. But this is most effective at the corner as it's the place where the opponents will feel trapped and pressured. Be sure to take notes on how often they wake up and figure out their wake up pattern. This move should not be used often as it leaves Johnny in a vulnerable state. Now I'll go ahead and hand it off to the competitor. His personal tips for playing as Johnny Cage. In Johnny Cage's first two tournament variations, he gets access to his straight force balls, back forward 2. They're not as great as before because it does not grant you as crazy of plus frames though. Certain ranges leave you at 0 on block and others at plus 1. It all depends on which strings you use. The problem is that most people believe this tool is great because it was plus 6 on block. The plus 6 is not the reason why it was extremely good before. The reason why Amplified Force Ball was good is because of the spacing it creates for Johnny. Because of his spacing, Johnny can now play his game in the neutral. Using his amazing footsies tools like back 3 to catch people pressing buttons, forward 3 for chasing people backdashing, and down 4 to interrupt people trying to poke back are all essential to his game plan. It's just a very powerful tool that you can get off of any hit, even off of his jabs. Force Balls also have an effective use in the neutral. Staying just outside of Johnny's forward 3 range is where you want to throw your Force Balls from. What this will do is force your opponent to play to Johnny's strengths. For example, let's say you're playing against a Sub-Zero player. At full screen, he can easily punish you with a slide because of the projectile's travel time. It makes it a lot easier to react to. But if you're just outside the max range of your normals, punishing you will be a lot more challenging as he will be hesitating to slide. He won't know if you will keep using force balls or if you're going to go for something else such as a back 3 or a dash down 4. It's a very powerful spacing tool. Straight force balls whiff on some crouch blocking opponents. It is best to play defensively and punish when you get the chance versus these characters. It can help to level up your defensive fundamentals and patience. It can be very inconsistent. Sometimes it will hit on block, and sometimes it will just whiff. Cabal, Jackie, and Sonya are just a few characters who are perfect examples. Here is a chart I put together that shows the data for force balls on crouch blocking opponents. Green is for the ones that force balls jail on block. Yellow is for those that are inconsistent or dependent on spacing. And red is for those that force balls whiff completely. So you can't rely on straight force balls as a pressure tool to make yourself safe or reset your spacing. At this point, your best strategy against these characters is to stay patient. I prefer outtake most of the time because of these issues, but playing Showstopper and Shock Jock just helps solidify that strong defensive fundamental gameplay. The great thing about using the Showstopper tournament variation is that you get access to unbreakable damage. Unbreakable damage means combos are ones that can't be broken because the opponent is never launched into the air. In some matches, you don't want to give your opponent the option to break away, and instead cash in and get that guaranteed damage. My usual go-to for an unbreakable one bar combo would be this. It does good damage and pushes them away, which depending on how you're playing the matchup, might be a good thing. I like to use Johnny's forward 3-4-4 four, four, up 4 string as a grounded combo ender. It does more damage than ending the combo with shadow kick and is a better tool for unbreakable damage. Johnny Cage has access to a very unique tool, his fatal blow dash cancel. Only him and Joker have it in the entire game. This is the act of canceling your fatal blow animation with a dash. So in order to do this, you would do the startup of the Fatal Blow, and while holding down your buttons to activate the Fatal Blow, you would either press forward forward, or back back. Getting faster at this takes a lot of time and practice, so I suggest just starting slow, holding the Fatal Blow, and then dashing out of it until you can get faster and faster. 
the best way to practice this to get the shades crushing blow combo would simply just do one two fatal blow dash cancel into one two in the showstopper variation you get access to johnny's shade special move down down two it is probably the most useless projectile in the game under normal circumstances it leaves johnny at minus 25 on block the arc of this move is trash and even though it's a mid, it goes over crouch blocking opponents. It even reflects off of them at certain distances. It's literally useless. You should never use this move unless you're really just trying to troll your opponent. But it does have a lethal use, and that attributes to his clutch factor. When you do a fatal blow dash cancel into his shades, you get the most devastating crushing blow in the game. This gives Johnny access to some of the best combo damage and unbreakable damage in the entire game. I suggest you go with this combo, it's my usual go-to and that's some big damage. There are more ways to optimize this, you can find out how in my ultimate showstopper combo guide. The link is in the description. Using the outtake tournament variation, you get access to Rising Star, his down back 3, which is one of the best moves in the game. On a hit, this move is amazing. It grants a knockdown that leaves Johnny right in your face and allows him to enforce his auto shimmy and his throws. It has enough hit advantage to also bait wake ups. On block this move is just as good because of amplified rising star resetting neutral. You can make your mid safe and deal good chip damage. 1-2-1 one, one into the amplified rising star is almost 7% on block. That is just a lot of stuff that you don't want to get hit by and it's all guaranteed on block with Johnny. Doing a down 1 into Amplified Rising Star will be your most popular attack string because of the spacing it creates. This will allow you to interrupt some attacks, or let you back up to play defensively after it on block. Down 1 Amplified Rising Star is strong because of the poke into special mind games are common among the top tier in the current MK11 meta. A strategy that I want to go over with you guys is about playing lame. Laming out your opponent may be a bad thing in some casual players' eyes, but in competitive play, this playstyle can force mistakes from your opponent. And this is exactly how I like to play Outtake, by capitalizing off of my opponent's mistakes. In Outtake variation, you get access to his arcing force balls, down forward 2 and down back 2, which make for an annoying zoning tool versus a lot of the cast. These are a lot more annoying to deal with full screen because of how plus they are. Players who are impatient will get hit by a lot of these coming in and it will just constantly chip away at their health. So what I like to do against players who I know are going to struggle with zoning is to always end my strings with shadow kick then back up to try to stop their advances. If I see them dashing forward, I'll down 4 a lot to check them in the neutral. Then I'll back up and just keep force balling and play lame until I get them to come to me. Then, when I know the player's getting impatient and frustrated by trying to press buttons all the time, is when I go in and play Johnny's pressure game with devastating frame traps and chip damage. Ending your combo with Nut Punch, back down 3, sometimes will be the most effective thing you can do with Johnny Cage because it leaves your opponent standing. In certain situations, you want to eliminate your opponent's wake up game, and Nut Punch will let you do just that. They can't roll forward or backwards, wake up buttons, or wake up up 3. Nut Punch will restand your opponent and gives you plus 5 advantage on hit. From there, you have a few ways to approach your opponents coming off that stun. I like it because it creates some mind games. The first thing you can do if you're using the outtake variation is down 1 into Rising Star. It's a good way to reset the neutral. It lets you play defensively or offensively whichever you feel is appropriate for the matchup. Second thing would be down 4. Your down 4 poke leads to a great hit confirm into forward 3 because it jails the opponent on hit leading to big damage. Or on block it guarantees you some chip damage with good spacing. Your third option is to use a throw. When timed properly it will frame trap any buttons pressed. Just be careful of the opponent ducking which opens up for a devastating down two crushing blow. The final tip here has to do with Johnny Cage's amazing ability for flawless blocking reversals, which allows him to steal turns. 
So his only mid attack, forward 4-4, four, four, is minus 5. If you try to poke, you're going to get beat out. But because of that minus 5, that's that magic number that lets us flawless block launch a reversal poke. If you know your opponent is going to press with a down 1 or a jab, you can flawless block and the timing will allow you to get an up 2 reversal to launch for a combo. You have to be careful though, because jab strings can beat this out since it doesn't have armor. So to counterplay a jab string, the safe bet to do would be to do flawless block up 3 because it is invulnerable. So this is important to enforce because it gives your opponent a mind game of, oh well it's technically my turn but if I press I could get punished for it. So that may make them respect you so you can go in for a throw or something afterwards because they're scared to press on your minus frames. But there is counterplay to this. Uh, if they slightly delay their buttons, even just by a couple frames, it will beat your flawless block attempt. But if you read their delay buttons, you can take your pressure or even punish them if you know they're going to delay a button or walk back. I want to thank the competitor for taking the time to help us out and giving us his best essential tips. Once again, thanks Mad Dog for having me on to help make this guide. I had a lot of fun recording with you. Let's hope that we can level up all the Johnny players so we can see them mopping in Combat League. If you guys have any awesome flawless block clips or anything of the sort, be sure to tag me on Twitter with those, at the competitor. You can find his YouTube channel as well as other social media platforms like Twitch and Twitter in the description down below. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon because there will be more videos like this in the future. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.